Hello, it's me, hi Oscar from Marijuana Garden. The sailing stones, what does that mean? They are geological phenomenon, where rocks move and etch on long tracks along a smooth valley floor, without human being or animal involvement. Where is it happening? It is observed and studied in various locations such as Racetrack Playa, Death Valley National Park, California, Little Bonnie Claire Playa in Nevada. Investigations about sailing stones The first documented account of the sliding rock phenomenon dates to 1915, when a prospector named Joseph Crook from Fallon, Nevada, visited the Racetrack Playa site. Naturalists from the National Park Service later wrote more detailed descriptions and Life magazine featured a set of photographs from the racetrack. Service ranger named Louis G. Kirk recorded detailed observations of frail length, width, and general course. He sought simply to investigate and record evidence of the moving rock phenomenon, not to hypothesize or create an extensive scientific report. Three lithological types involved with this phenomena. Cyanite, found most abundant on the west side of the playa. Dolomite, sub-rounded blue-gray stones with white bands. Black dolomite, the most common type, found almost always in angular joint locks or slippers. Movement description. Stones with rough bottoms leave straight striated tracks, while those with smooth bottoms tend to wander. Stones sometimes turn over, exposing another edge to the ground, and leaving a different track in a stone's wake. Tracks are often up to 100 meters, 330 feet, long, about 8 to 30 centimeters, 3 to 12 in, wide, and typically much less than 2.5 centimeters, 1 in, deep. Most moving stones range from about 6 to 18 in, 15 to 46 centimeters, in diameter. Trails differ in both direction and length. 21st Century Development In 2009, development of inexpensive time-lapse digital cameras allowed the capturing of transient meteorological phenomena including dust devils and playa flooding. These cameras were aimed at capturing various stages of the previously mentioned phenomena, though discussion of the sliding stones ensued. The developers of photographic technology describe the difficulty of capturing the racetrack stealthy rocks, as movements only occur about once every three years, and they believed lasted about 10 seconds. Their next identified advancement was wind-triggered imagery, vastly reducing the 10 million seconds of non-transit time they had to sift through. The research and experiments, based on a study, News articles reported that the mystery solved when researchers observed rock movements using GPS and time-lapse photography. The research team witnessed and documented rock movement on December 20, 2013, that involved more than 60 rocks, with some rocks moving up to 224 meters between December 2013 and January 2014 and multiple move events. These observations contradicted earlier hypotheses of winds, or thick ice floating rocks off the surface. Some GPS measured moves lasted up to 16 minutes, and a number of stones moved more than five times during the existence of the Playa Pond in the winter of 2013-14. Ralph Lawrence, a NASA scientist, investigated the phenomenon in 2006. To illustrate the ice wrath theory, Lawrence developed an experiment using a kitchen table model using a Tupperware container to show how heavy rocks might glide across the surface of the lake bed. A bed of sand is added to the bottom of the Tupperware, a rock is placed on the sand, and water is added until only a small edge of the rock sticks out. After putting the container in the freezer until the water is frozen, then removing the container and letting the ice begin to melt, Lawrence could end up with a small raft of floating ice with a rock embedded in it. All he had to do was gently blow on the floating ice sheet to get the rock to drag across the sand. Conclusion The mystery has not been solved completely, however. The video shows how smaller rocks move, but no one has ever seen the gigantic playa boulders budge an inch. Another process may be at work on the biggest rocks, according to Jim Norris, an engineer and member of the research team. He explains about his experience, it's a fascinating process, and in many ways I hope that there's more to be discovered.